Okay, partway through the reassembly, and I just wanted to make sure that some of the um, some of the information that I gave is clear. This is the front of the unit there, front of the pump, and as you can see, there are. Um, I, I think I just dropped all the rollers out, <laughs> but you can see there. There's the timing gear, the, the sprocket rocket hub, whatever you want to call it. Um, but on the other side, yep, I dropped all of the bearings out doing it that way. That's why you don't do it in the car. Because <laughs> uh, within a horizontal position, these rollers actually fall out. And then uh, you have to put them back in, but you can't do it in the car. So, uh, but anyway, I, I really wanted to show that because the sprocket is in time, you can see it down there. See? That's right right there. Um, this is the cam gear, the one that actually does the lifting and pushes the high pressure pump in the head. You need to make sure that it is offset. Um, some people say about two, two o'clock in the two o'clock position. You don't want it down in this position when you do your rear assembly or she's going to be 180 degrees out of time. So you, you do it there. Okay. Um, and let, me, let me line up with the pump body so you see roughly it's right about there. Actually, I should have showed you that first. And, and and when you're um, resealing the head, this is the little the little bushing that falls out between the pump head, the high pressure pump head plunger, and that um, the the gear that actually pushes the the plunger in and out. And those rollers are if you come out too far, those are the ones that just kind of they, they lose their position due to gravity. You just have to make sure you put them back in the proper way. That washer does go in a certain way. That washer is shaped towards that inner shaft. Right. Uh, TDI love from Chicago. Um, on my way putting it back together and it shouldn't take me that long. It should only take a couple of, uh, probably about 30, 40 minutes to put it back together. It's not that tedious. It's just you got to make sure you put everything back. Um, I'm using some clean stash you can see. Um, instead of using long nose pliers, um, using some magnets, that, that's actually a really powerful child's magnet. Um, comes in handy in putting some of these parts in. Alright, take care guys. Good luck. If you have any questions, comments, let me know. Uh, I help you out as best I can. I did this because essentially the pump, if you send it out to be rebuilt, it's going to cost about $400 to $900 to be rebuilt. And um, the rebuild kit, and that's always minus the front seal. The rebuild kits are roughly about 15 bucks. Um, that's the average price. That's for all the seals. That's the seals on that guy, the seals on the head, and of course the seals on the IP stuff that's on top. I, um, I'm going to take you over here to my IP pump. Okay, or IQ pump, whatever you call it. I, I dip mine in uh, this carburetor, Kim Dip Carburetor Parts Cleaner. That is not like carburetor spray. It's uh, more of a, um, a a petroleum based solvent it doesn't have a smell I'm, I'm in my house I cannot smell it that's some really cool stuff so you put that in there and you just want to make sure that I'm going to show you the other IQ or IP whichever you call it uh, the computer controlled quantity adjuster um, injection quantity adjuster you just want to make sure that this this little knob on the bottom has full range has full range and makes that clicking noise. You hear that clicking noise? That's the springs. There's two springs in there to pull it back. Um, of course, you can look at the pin out here on it. This is a 10 because uh, it's a 98 to 2000. Oh no, it's 2000 to 2003, I think, has the 10. And the other ones have the, uh, the 8 and the 2. The, the 2 is for this guy here, which is the thing that goes to the bottom of the pump. It is the um, co-start valve. It actually puts a little more fuel into the the injectors when the car first starts out and the computer tells it to turn that turn that on or off. Um, that's not in the 8 pin plug, that's in the 10 pin plug. And that makes it so that you have to take all this goofy crap apart. Alright, um, the last thing I want to note is that, that there's that crud being cleaned out of that, that cap at the bottom. The last thing I want to note is that um, this is my second time doing it. The first time I told you I had that timing problem, the second time I had that timing time. Um, the reassembly process is pretty straightforward. 
I use in some of my parts I use uh, some dielectric grease, 100% silicone dielectric grease by Superlu. That helps the parts stick in the location where you want them, but it doesn't gum up the area, and you don't have to worry about it. It actually washes out once the car gets going. Um, I was using some other lubricant before, but this uh, the dielectric seems a little bit better. Uh, works under higher pressures, goes to higher temperatures and lower temperatures as well. All right, that's it. Uh, please do not forget to subscribe and try it. Hey, I mean, the worst you can do is break it and then you still have to send it out. So, hey. All right, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. TDL from Chicago.